Hello and welcome back to Mr. Wickens Reads Varjak Poor, no, The Outlaw Varjak Poor, um, by SF Said, illustrated by Dave McKean. Hello everybody, welcome to chapter three. Man, okay, so chapter two, bit intense, crazy stuff. Hope you were all okay. Um, let's crack on with chapter three. Are we ready? Varjak and his friends raced away from the alley. They left the dump behind and sprinted into the night. New streets opened up ahead of them. Above, the moon shone through the clouds. You showed him, Varjak, said Tam. Did you see it, Holly? Did you see... Did you see it? Oh, did you see what he did to that big bully? It was crazy, said Holly. It was amazing. She was smiling. So was Tam. Varjak tried to smile with them, but he couldn't. He felt scared. He was scared of his power. It had grown so strong. It had taken him over. He might have killed Razor if Holly hadn't stopped him. He came out of slow time. It was hard. The side of his face was starting to throb. That must have been where Razor had slashed him. What's wrong, Varjak? said Holly as they ran through the neon streets. You won! I... I went too far. Razor would have done worse, said Tam. He deserved it, said Holly. He hasn't been the same since he joined that gang. Tam's ears twitched. What's going to happen when Luger comes back? And when she finds out? Varjak glanced over his shoulder. For a moment, he thought he could see Sally Bones, the thin white cat, coming after him with her ice blue eye. But it was just a neon light flashing in the snow. We'll lie low, said Holly. We'll hide for the night. Follow me. Vodak followed, glad to have Holly by his side. She always knew what to do. He didn't want to fight anymore. He just wanted to hide, to huddle up and go to sleep somewhere secret, somewhere safe. They came to a row of tall brick buildings. Between the buildings, there was a maze of narrow passages. Holly plunged into the maze and led them swiftly through. Snow lay thick on the ground. As they ran, new snow filled their paw prints behind them and covered the trail from Cludge's bloody nose. Cludge, sorry, panted the big dog. Should have, could have, he tailed off. Sorry, he concluded. No, Cludge, said Tam. You were so brave. You stood up for me. I'll never forget it. Except maybe you shouldn't stay with us. You'll only get in trouble. Good, stay! Stay with friends! Always! Tam smiled. So did Varjak, but Holly was shaking her head. Kludge, you can stay as long as you like, she said, but don't you have a family? Or some friends who are, you know, dogs? Kludge's eyes went cloudy. Family? He muttered. Kludge got no family. Why not? Angry with Kludge! Can never go back. Never. Well, there's only one place to hide, said Holly, and you're too big for it. Look. Before them now were some black iron railings deep in the shadows of a black street. The railings were hidden behind heaps of rubble and coils of electrical cable. It looked like a dead end that didn't lead anywhere, but this was actually the entrance to a little network of alleys. Only Varjak, Holly and Tam knew about these secret alleys. They were right in the centre of the city, in the neutral ground that didn't belong to Sally Bones. It was the only safe place they knew. And Varjak had never felt more glad to see it. His neck fur prickled. He heard something in the shadows. It sounded like a cat, a cornered cat, with his back against the wall. And there was the strangest scent, something unnatural like a cat's ghost. An animal bolted out of the shadows into the night. Varjak hardly saw it, just a blur at the edge of his vision. It was the size of a cat, but it couldn't be a cat. It was the wrong shape, no tail, and its head was... He wasn't sure what it was. He turned to look, but it was gone. What was that? he said. Tam's fur was standing on end, like she had had an electric shock. It's... it's... It's all right, said Holly. It's gone now. But what was it? said Varjak. And how could it find the secret alleys? And... It's nothing to do with us. Forget about it. It was hiding in the shadows. It didn't find the alleys. 
Holly shimmied past the rubble, through the railings and disappeared on the other side. It's all clear, came her voice. Everything's safe in here. But can you see the problem, Cludge? We're going through these railings. They're too small for a dog. Varjak felt rattled by the strange animal, whatever it was, but it had gone now. And Holly was right about Cludge. He could see she was right, yet he could also see Cludge pressing his muddle, muzzle into the railings, trying to follow, trying to fit. Then, panted Cludge, then uh, Cludge guard it. He moved in front of the railings, covering them with his huge body and made his most fearsome face. Cludge not scared. He snapped his teeth. Cludge guarding. <laughs> Oh, Cludge, said Tam. He can't stay, can he, Varjak? There's a picture of him. <laughs> it's dangerous, came Holly's voice. We can't leave him out there like a giant signpost. He's our friend, said Varjak, and he's staying if he wants to. He turned to the big dog. You stay here, Cludge. Stay and guard it. Bark if anyone comes. Cludge barked and wagged his tail, sending up a flurry of snow. Tam cheered. Hooray! It's asking for trouble, said Holly. Oh, but there's no time to argue. Now get in here before Sally Bones comes. Varjak and Tam scrambled through the railings into the secret alleys. There were no neon lights here, just the faintest glow from faraway windows. Fire escapes led up to the rooftops. Strain pipes snaked down through the grills in the ground to sewers below. The ground was made of tight-packed cobblestones. The alleys were sheltered from the weather, so the cobbles were dry and free from snow. A little warmth filtered up from the sewers through those grills in the ground. Varjak could see something glimmering down there, like water moving far beneath the frozen city. He curled up in a corner. Oh, it's good to be back, he sighed. Oh, I'm never leaving the secret alleys again, said Tam as she made herself comfortable. <laughs> then you'll never eat another mouse, said Holly, except in your dreams. Mmm, <gasps> she murmured, sweet, sweet dreams. Say we lost that mouse, mused Holly. I wish we'd eaten it before we got before they got there, but then we would have had Sally Bones' punishment. What is Sally Bones' punishment anyway, said Varjak. Oh, you don't want to know, said Holly. There shouldn't be a punishment, should there? All cats should be allowed to hunt, and not just her gang. I'm never hunting again, said Tam. Not after tonight, and not when she does those horrible things. What things, said Varjak. Tam just flinched. Holly's ears and tail twitched. Don't say, it's, it's too horrible. She shook her head. You know what gets me the most, she said, changing the subject. Is the way they call it the law, as if it's something we all agree on, but it's not. They just do whatever they want, and we have to accept it. And now we can't even go to the dump anymore, groaned Tam. If we don't get some food soon, or waste away, or become thin. What gives them the right, said Holly. Just because they're bigger and stronger than us, they think they can push us around. There was silence for a moment. Then she carried on, very quietly, her voice full of gravel. We shouldn't be scared of them, she said. So many cats in the city hate the Bones gang. Mrs Moggs always said we should stand up to them, but no one ever dares. Mrs Moggs, said Varjak. The oldest, wisest cat in the city. Oh, sorry. The oldest, wisest cat in the city, said Tam. She lives by the river in the centre where we grew up. Wait till she hears how you beat Razor. -ha! We'll take you to meet her tomorrow. Right, Holly? Holly yawned. Maybe. Right now, though. <sighs> we can all use some sleep. She curled up in the shadows next to Tam. Night, Varjak, she said as her eyes closed. Varjak frowned. He always dreamed of being a great fighter. The greatest. But reality was turning out to be more difficult than any dream. Wait till she hears how you beat Razor. He didn't even want to think about how he lost control of his power, or how Luger and Sally Bones and that strange animal he'd seen outside the secret alleys. 
Oh, he was too tired to think at all. He shut his eyes. A great wave of exhaustion washed over him and took him down into sleep. And we all know what happens when Barjack goes to sleep. It's the next chapter. Barjack dreamed. Oh, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you tomorrow, half past six, for the next episode, chapter four, which is called Varjak Dreamed, um, of the outlaw Varjak Paul. Brilliant. See you then. Bye.